Great, thank you, Andrea. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Regina Mitchell. I'm the director of the Delaware Division of Small Business. Uh, thank you all for joining us for today's webinar. It's it's great to see so much interest and such a strong turnout this morning. Uh, we'll be providing information about the EDGE grant competition uh, and how small business owners can put together a successful application. So we have a lot of stuff to cover this morning, so let's get started. Um, first, I want to introduce our presenters for today. So... Uh, along with myself, we have Andrew Harton, who's our business finance director. Uh, he'll be going over the financial information and the, the rubrics that you should be following. Uh, we are also joined by Tom, Thun sorry, Tom Thunstrom from the uh, Small Business Development Center. And we're also going to be getting advice from one of our previous EDGE winners, Kathy Collison from Pink Electric in Smyrna. Uh, in addition to them, we also have our communications director, Andrea Wojcik, who will be our moderator for the questions at the end. Okay. Um, we want to encourage you to write down questions as you go or type them into the Q&A box. Please don't use the chat box, use the Q&A box. Uh, we'll answer all questions at the end of the presentation, and we'll repeat this several times for those who join us late. Uh, we'll be putting the recording for the slides and this presentation on our website at de.gov edge by the end of today. Next slide. Uh, so a little bit about us. The Division of Small Business is a service-focused state agency within the Department of State, uh, and we're committed to helping small businesses start and grow in Delaware. Uh, we also have the Delaware Tourism Office and the Office of Supplier Diversity within our division. Uh, our main office is here in Dover, but we have a satellite office in Wilmington. Um, and we support small businesses primarily uh, in three ways uh, and mostly through our regional business managers who I'll introduce in a moment. Uh, so we help small businesses first by navigating government processes, um, helping you to cut through the red tape or any issues that you might be finding as you're trying to get what you need for your business. Uh, we also connect you with resource organizations. There are over 100 partner organizations that we work with in the state, and we can connect you to the ones who can help you with what you're looking for. And then finally, we help small businesses with accessing capital, whether that's through the EDGE program, through one of our other programs, or through another organization in the state. Uh, we're here to make you aware of and help connect you to funding opportunities for which you may qualify. Next slide. Uh, so just want to quickly <clears throat> introduce you, <clears throat> excuse me, to the members of our team. Um, so small business team, if you can give a little wave when I introduce you. Uh, give them a second to put their cameras on. <laughs> so I'm going to start with Joe Zelkowski. He is our uh, regional business manager for Northern Newcastle County uh, in the city of Wilmington. Uh, I see Lauren Swain next. She is our regional business manager for Sussex County. Um, Oh, Anastasia, there's Anastasia. She is our regional business manager for Kent County. Uh, Dave Matthew is our regional business manager for Southern Newcastle County. Um, we have Siobhan White joining us. She is the director of the Office of Supplier Diversity. Um, I mentioned Andrew Harton. You'll be hearing from him in a little bit. Um, and then we have Laura Whistler, who is the deputy director here at the division. And I believe that covers everybody. Okay, next slide, please. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so onto the EDGE competition. This is our eighth round of funding since the EDGE grant program launched back in 2019. Um, and here's a picture of our original round one winners way back then. Um, so since the program launched, uh, $5 million has been awarded to 80 promising Delaware small businesses in a wide variety of industries. Finalists in this round will pitch their proposals to a panel of expert judges at the end of November with winners notified in December. Next slide, please. So EDGE grants are in two categories. Uh, we have STEM, which are science, technology, engineering, or math related businesses. Uh, we get questions about this sometimes, whether you're in the STEM category or the entrepreneur category. So um, I think if, if you're trying to decide 
first uh, reach out to one of our, our regional business managers. They can help you with that. Um, but really look at the function of your business. So an example I like to use is if you are doing like STEM education, if you have like a program where you're teaching kids to code, that's not really what we would consider a STEM applicant. You would really be in the entrepreneur category. But if you are developing an app, um, that would be somebody who would be eligible for the STEM category. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Um, and again, the entrepreneur category would be any other businesses that are not STEM related. And again, as like the function of the business. Um, so STEM applicants can win up to five or sorry, up to one hundred thousand dollars and entrepreneur applicants can win up to fifty thousand dollars with five grants awarded in each category. So 10 grants total. Um, oh, Regina, can, I'm sorry, Regina, can I interrupt for a moment? Uh, sure. Somebody said they can only see you. Um, can everybody else see the slides or is everybody else seeing only Regina? I can see the slides. Um, looking for, okay. Uh, okay. To Wiena Ricks, I'm gonna let Some you people talk. said they, people are responding that they can see they, the slides. They can see the slides? Yes. Okay, I can good. see. I can see the slides, this is to Wana. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. All right, you can go ahead, sorry about that. No, no problem. Okay, um, again, so we wanna stress to everybody that this is a very competitive process. Uh, in a typical round, we receive about 130 applicants. Um, and of those, we select 14 to go to the finals. And then of those, we have uh, 10 winners overall. So um, we, do, we do tend to get a lot of applications. So it is very competitive. Next slide, please. So who is eligible? Um, you are eligible if you have been in business for less than seven years. Um, and so we go by year for this. We don't go by month. So if you formed your business in 2016, you are eligible for this round of EDGE funding. Um, this will be the last round that 2016 businesses are eligible. Next round, it will bump up to 2016. So uh, you're also eligible if you have less than 10 full-time employees. Uh, if you're the only employee as the owner, that's fine too. Um, there's no like minimum amount of employees you have to have. Uh, and then part-time employees, we do pretty simple math on this. Uh, two part-time employees is one full-time employee. And if you have somebody who is working less than 10 hours a week, less than four months a year, or it's a contracted employee, they don't count at all. Um, and then you must be majority located in Delaware. And that means uh, your facility and your employees. So you should have a physical location here. Uh, not just an address or a P.O. box. We understand a lot of people like to register their business in Delaware, but we need you to actually have a physical presence in Delaware as well. And the majority of your employees need to be located here as well. Um, so they should be Delaware employees. They should be like on your payroll. Payroll taxes should be coming to Delaware for them. Next slide. Um, so we have a couple other requirements. So your net assets must be less than 500,000, um, but there are no limits on your revenue. Uh, if you're not yet in business, you are eligible to apply as well, but you should be prepared to have financial statements available, um, especially uh, in terms of like projected financial statements. And then this question, we get a lot about 501c3s. So nonprofits are not uh, prohibited from applying to EDGE, um, but yeah, it is, given the way that the rubric is structured, uh, it is difficult for nonprofits to advance um, through the scoring rounds. Um, you should, it's really those who um, have like a business side to the operation. Those are the ones who are more likely to advance, but just due to the structure of the rubric and the emphasis on return and investment, uh, it is difficult. Uh, but again, you are not prohibited from applying. Uh, and then finally, your business should be compliant with uh, all of our Delaware regulators. So we'll check with the de uh, Department of Labor, DEMREC, the Division of Revenue uh, to make sure that everything is, is good there. Next slide, please. Uh, so when it comes to the 
proposal itself, uh, we have some formatting requirements. So the application should be Times New Roman font, size 12, double spaced. Uh, the whole app, uh, the whole proposal, so this doesn't include the application that you're filling out, but your proposal that you're submitting should be 20 pages or less. Um, like I said before, we do receive a large number of applications every round and our staff reads through every one of those. So we are, are very strict about our 20 page limit. Uh, we instruct staff to stop reading after page 20. So if you have important information on page 21 or your financials or any of the required stuff, that will not count because we cut it right at page 20. Um, so if you have like a table of contents or an index, those aren't required. But if you include it, uh, please know that it counts as part of that 20 pages. So if you need to cut it to make the 20 page limit, please do so. Uh, and then all applications must be submitted via PDF electronically to edgegrants at Delaware.gov. Next slide. Uh, the deadline for applications will be Friday, September 29th at 4 p.m. Uh, and again, we are strict about that. We look at when things were submitted to the inbox. So please keep that in mind. Next slide, please. Uh, again, as I mentioned, we'll repeat this uh, throughout for people who join us later, but please write down questions into the Q&A box and not the chat box. Uh, we'll answer them at the end. And then all of this, uh, the slides, the video, the recording will all be posted uh, on de.gov slash edge at the end of today. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, so let's go over the basics of an edge application. Um, all successful edge applications will highlight where the business is in terms of market size, uh, your competition, your capacity, things like that. Um, what the business need is for an edge grant. Why does your business need this funding? How will you use it? Uh, being specific is very helpful here. And then finally, how the edge grant will help your business to succeed in the future. What's the return on investment? Is there some sort of community impact? What does that look like? Next slide, please. Okay, um, and then some of the focus areas. So market sizing, uh, we do expect edge applicants to do a bit of research for their applications. Uh, we want to know that you, you know, have have looked into this. You're aware of what your targeted market is. Um, you know who your customers are and what the market for your business or product is. Um, also, want you to define your competition. So think about your customers here and what they might purchase instead of your product or service. Um, you know, small businesses always have competition. So another example we like to use a lot is if you own a flower shop and you're the only flower shop in your town, uh, that doesn't mean you don't have competition. Your competition could be like the grocery stores that also sell flowers or candy stores or bakeries or places that people will go to purchase something in lieu of flowers. So really think that part through. Um, we have a tool on our website to help small businesses determine their market size and competition. Uh, size Up Delaware can help you with these items and, and more as you're drafting your edge application. So really want to encourage you to explore the site at delaware.sizeup.com. Um, and this year, we're also holding a companion webinar, uh, which will take place on September 6th, that will walk uh, you through how to use this tool and what uh, what it can be used for, what kind of data you can pull from it. Uh, so I want to encourage you to do that. I think it's really helpful. And part of the reason that we uh, invested in the Size Up Delaware tool was uh, as, a, as a resource for all our businesses, but we thought it would be particularly helpful for our edge applicants. Um, so you can register for the webinar at the address above, or you can go again to our website, de.gov slash edge and register there. Um, and then finally, challenges. Uh, so your application should outline the challenges that your business faces. I'm sorry, that your business faces. Um, even if you don't think you have them, you do. And that's totally fine. That's okay. We expect that you do. Um, but we also want to hear about how the EDGE grant will help you to address those challenges. Uh, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Andrew Harton, who's our business finance director, and he's going to go over some of the financial information we'll be looking for. Andrew? All right. Thank you, Regina. So now we get to talk about every business owner's favorite aspect of running a business, which is managing the financials. Uh, and I've been trying to respond to some of the questions as they come into the chat here. Uh, we've already received a couple, couple questions on this topic. 
So, so firstly, um, your application must include an income statement and a balance sheet. Um, if you're not sure what those are, we're gonna talk a little bit more about those on the next slide. Um, but I encourage you to reach out to your regional business manager for help with those. Um, and they can also get you in contact with the SBDC uh, who will be presenting a little bit later in this presentation. Um, the best applications incorporate financial data into their proposals. So um, for, for example, if you're looking to use the EDGE grant to purchase a piece of equipment, you should be able to quantify how that equipment is going to help your business. Maybe you're gonna become more efficient. You're gonna be able to produce more units within a given time period, or maybe your expenses will go down because you'll be able to reduce your labor costs. Um, and you should be able to talk about how that the EDGE funding is going to um, improve your financials and improve the financial position of your business. Um, it's important to note that we're not evaluating your financials as a creditor. We're not looking to see, you know, um, if, if you have a strong balance sheet or, or, or more revenue on your income statement, you're not going to be a more qualified edge candidate. But we really want to see your financials so that we can gain a better understanding of your business. Um, and we also want to see if what you're proposing in your edge application, your proposal aligns with the financials that you're, you're presenting to us uh, with your business. Uh, and to address this next question here, I think we've got we've got a slide uh, after this. We can go to the next one, Andrew. All right, so balance sheet versus your income statement. So the balance sheet is a snapshot of what your business owns, which we call your assets, and how those things were funded. So, you know, via a liability or equity. Uh, and that's for a given period of time. For example, for a lot of you, if you're looking, your balance sheet will likely be uh, dated the end of the most recent calendar year, let's say a snapshot of your business as of December 31st, 2022. Uh, it depends on your accounting year, but my guess is for most of you, that's what your balance sheet is going to reflect. Um, and remember, your balance sheet reflects items at the price they were purchased for or the cost they were incurred to make them. So if you can't price it, it probably doesn't belong on your balance sheet. The income statement shows the flow of revenues against expenses for a given period. And that's going to end with your bottom line or your net profit or your, your loss. And again, that's probably for most of you going to be for the most recent year. So a complete income statement for, for 2022. Um, if your business is not making a profit yet, uh, that's fine. You should still have some form of financials. For example, you may have purchased a business license or you may have a subscription. Um, you may not have revenue yet, but you should have some sort of balance sheet and income statement that you can provide. I'd like to stress that if your business is not operating yet, we're going to place a little bit more emphasis on your, your projections. So you're going to provide five years of projections as part of your, uh, your application, financial projections. And we want to see that you understand how your revenue is going to be generated. So if you're, let's say, proposing a restaurant, then you're, you're going to want to talk about the number of covers you anticipate for your check average, something that's going to be a revenue driver. And we want to make sure that you understand your business when we look at your financials. You can go to the next slide, Andrew. All right, so um, let's talk a little bit about the EDGE program and the match. So EDGE funding cannot be used to fund your entire project, right? You're going to have to have skin in the game. And that's the purpose of the three to one match. So we will contribute $3 for every dollar you put up. Now, if you're a STEM applicant, you can apply for up to a $100,000 grant. And if you're an entrepreneur applicant, you can apply for up to $50,000. Now, what does that mean in terms of what you need to put up uh, to, to achieve that match? So if you're a STEM applicant, you basically need around $34,000, just under $34,000, uh, in your own investment in this project in order to achieve that full match if you're gonna ask for the $100,000. And as an entrepreneur, it's just under $17,000. $16,667 is, is what you're going to need to contribute to the project in order to qualify for a full $50,000 match. And an important thing to note here about the match is that it should be specific to the project. So if you're purchasing, again, a new piece of equipment, um, you know, and let's say the equipment costs fifty thousand dollars. Perhaps your match is the installation of the equipment, the preparation of the space, um, maybe a uh, a special consultant that you're going to need to hire in order to help teach you how to run that equipment or install that equipment. It should all be project specific. 
your match shouldn't be or can't be, I should say, um, let's say an employee working in another, the, the wages of an employee working in another department unrelated to the, to the, uh, to the project that you applied for. Um, and you can also use again, other grants uh, to, as your match as well to, to help uh, fund your portion of the match. So this is the EDGE checklist. Um, there are four rounds of review prior to uh, finalists being selected. And I would like to kind of stress that round one really has a lot to do with this checklist. So we're trying to figure out, did this applicant submit everything that we required of them? And it's unfortunate that we do have applicants every round that let's say don't include a copy of their business license um, and don't sign and notarize their application. And it's a shame because that application isn't moving on to those further rounds. So even if it's a fantastic application, if it's missing one of these essential components, then it's not gonna get the opportunity to go to the final round. Next, uh, next slide there. All right, so um, this is a snapshot of our STEM rubric. The entire rubric can be found on our website. Um, this specifically refers to, uh, let's say the ROI. So uh, a specific co component of your proposal. Now, something to note here is that if you plan on being a finalist, you're gonna wanna be in this far right category. So my suggestion when you are assembling your proposal is that you go through each of these uh, components that your score is gonna be comprised of and you make sure that you're addressing every single one of those requirements. Um, because if you're, if you're living on the right side of this score sheet for your application as you're filling it out, then you're really gonna increase your, your chances of making it to that, to that final round. And in particular, for example, for this, this STEM rubric, you know, when we talk about ROI, you know, we aren't, we're, we're interested in the, in the return of investment that you're gonna achieve in, in your business through the EDGE grant. Um, maybe it's an, an increase in revenue or, or, or uh, decrease in your expenses, but we also wanna talk about the state's benefit. Are you gonna be hiring more employees and they're gonna be in turn paying more payroll tax? Um, you know, are you going to be involved in the community? What is the state's return on investment for the EDGE program as well? Next one. All right, and here's, we have a, a snapshot of, of the entrepreneur uh, rubric. So this refers specifically to the business need. So again, yep, we have here community impact um, and then the, the two bonuses. You always wanna make sure that you're living on the right side of that rubric and that you're addressing every single one of those, uh, those score opportunities. All right. And I'll hand it back off to uh, Regina. Thank you. Um, so as you saw on the rubric, there is a geographic bonus if your business is located in an opportunity zone or a downtown development district. So we get questions a lot about what an opportunity zone is. So this is a federal program that's designed to spur economic investment in economically distressed areas. Um, so we have designated opportunity zones located throughout the state. Here's a map of them. Um, I also really encourage you to go to that website there uh, that has a, a, like a usable map that you can use. You can type in the address of your business and you'll be able to see if it's located in an opportunity zone. And then the um, downtown development district maps are embedded on there as well. So that's really useful. That's uh, one of the things that we use when we're trying to determine if you qualify for that geographic bonus. Next slide, please. Uh, again, just a reminder, the deadline is Friday, September 29th at 4 p.m. Uh, submit it electronically to the uh, email address. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> um, so just wanted to share some information about what happens after you submit your application. Uh, so candidly, you are not going to hear anything for a couple months. Um, like I said, we get over 100 applications. Our staff read through every one and we go through uh, four rounds of internal scoring and review. Uh, so that takes a while. Um, once we get down to our finalists, we have uh, two separate panels. So we have two, two finalist presentation days, one for the STEM 
finalists and one for the entrepreneurs. We have different judging panels for each of those. Um, each finalist gets 15 minutes to present their proposal to the judges and then 15 minutes for question and answer period. Um, they are typically notified within a week of the finals, um, but that information is always embargoed until the official award ceremony with the governor. Um, you know, that just, it just depends on his schedule and how quickly we can get that on the calendar and make that happen. Uh, we do, we don't prohibit you from like sharing that information with your friends and family, but you are not allowed to like publicly post anything on your social media uh, or make any announcements like that. Uh, and then ultimately, if you're not selected as a finalist or as a winner, uh, please reach out to your regional business manager. They can provide you with feedback from the scoring process or the judging process. Um, and we, we want you to really not take, don't take not being selected as a no, um, take it as a not yet. We have so many of our finalists and winners who didn't make it through on their first or second or sometimes third attempt. Um, but but our business managers are really here as a resource to help you guide guide through guide you through that process and kind of take take their feedback um, to adjust your application moving forward. Next slide. Uh, so then, if you are selected as a winner, uh, we have a grant agreement that you will need to sign. You'll need to register as a vendor with the state in order to receive your funding. Um, so, you know, we'll again, we will confirm compliance with all the other state agencies to make sure that you have obviously paid your taxes and you don't have any labor violations and you don't have any DENREC violations and you're just a good, uh, good business citizen of the state. Um, then you receive your funding up front. Uh, you have one year to spend that and then submit an expense report to us showing how the funds were spent and that they were spent you know, on what you said they were going to spend it on, and it's all eligible. Um, and then you're required to submit an annual report for the next five years. And so during that reporting period, you must remain in the state of Delaware. If you move your business operations out of the state of Delaware, we are going to ask for that funding back. And by ask, I mean, we are going to take your grant funding back. So uh, next slide, please. Okay, so that is primarily it for the Division of Small Business portions uh, of the EDGE webinar. Again, if you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A box. We will address them at the end, and then this will be posted on our website by the end of the day. Uh, now I'm going to turn it over to Tom Thunstrom, who is the Center Director for the Delaware Small Business Development Center for Sussex County. Tom? Right. Thank you, Regina. And good morning, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm happy that the uh, Division of Small Business has invited us to talk briefly about the EDGE grant process and how we can help you and help your business, um, not just with EDGE grants, but beyond that. So we're going to spend a couple of minutes talking about the SBDC, offer some best practices and some suggestions for the EDGE grant process as you all apply. Next slide, please. So the SBDC has been in Delaware for 40 years. We serve all three counties. We have two uh, satellite centers. We have two centers in the state, one at the University of Delaware and then one in Georgetown. Uh, we will cover the entire state between those two centers. We're funded by the state of Delaware, but also by the Small Business Administration and hosted out of the University of Delaware. Our advising is free and confidential, so we work on Vegas rules, so what's said in the room stays in the room. Um, if we need to um, talk to somebody on your behalf, we would have you sign a waiver or a release to do so. Next slide. In our time in Delaware, we've worked with many businesses, and you may know some of them. Um, and, and oftentimes, I say if you throw a rock down a main street or down a main highway, you may hit a business that the SBDC has impacted positively over the last 40 years. Um, we've helped over 20,000 clients. We've helped over 1,300 of them become businesses and have raised um, over $250 million in capital through loans, grants, and other venture capital, um, and nearly a billion dollars in government contracts through our friends at Apex. Next slide. The type of work that we do at the SBDC includes business planning, we help you find capital, and we partner with the Division of Small Business, Regional Business Managers, in many respects to help out on those with business plans, financial projections, um, we help on cybersecurity. We have a very robust tech and cybersecurity platform, one of the best in, um, 
best practices that the SBA has rolled out to other uh, states for SBDC rollout. Um, we also work with digital marketing and e-commerce to help businesses get creative and um, adapt to the ever-changing landscape. You know, three years ago, we weren't TikToking all that much. Now everybody TikToks. So we're trying to stay up and um, on point on the marketing trends and on social media trends and also on e-commerce trends because uh, platforms for e-commerce change rapidly. Next slide. And those are some of the areas where we help can help with financial projections, like I mentioned, help you find equipment, whether it's SBA financing or conventional. Um, we partner with almost every financial institution in the state, banks, credit unions, but also those resources that are available outside of the state of Delaware as well that can help businesses out. Next slide. Now I wanted to share some itch grant best practices with you. Um, a couple of things that are really important in this. The first and foremost is Helping where we come into play is where we will help you show your grant award, generating additional business sales, lower costs for your business, and increased bottom line for your business. You want your projections to outline where the state's investment in you is going to result in those things. So whether it's for equipment or whether it's for fit out for a new business, whatever those may be. The grant really needs to tell the, the tale and your financial projections should highlight where the grant is going to help your business out. Um, it's important, I think, for you to show in your project also what EDGE grant is going to fund, the specifics. Remember that three to one match, it can cover some aspects of that project. So if you're buying a truck, for instance, with the upgrade $60,000 for that truck, for instance, how much of that is coming from edge? How much of that is going to be sourced from other, you know, other sources, whether it's out of pocket, financing, other grants, et cetera. Um, one of the things that's in the grants that's really important to note is scenarios, especially on the entrepreneurial side, where what happens if you don't get a grant? How do you perform? What is your business going to do? So you should show scenarios in the grant that highlight both the win but also what I call the bootstrap solution, which is you do it yourself or you simply get it financed completely. So we can help show those outlines and show those two scenarios in kind of an A, B case. Again, we wanna show how the state's investment in you is going to pay off. Most importantly, when you win, you wanna make sure that you're tracking account your expenses because again, the state's gonna ask for a report out on how you did. So you should be able to account for those. Don't just throw all that money in one bank account and. and you know, model it with everything else. We'll help you through that process if you're a winner. Next slide. One thing that I really want to stress in this is start this process soon. If you're going to a regional business manager on, let's say, September 29th at 2.30 in the afternoon, the odds of you getting the help that you need on your grant are going to be pretty limited. This is Labor Day weekend homework. I will say that now. Start working on this now. Um, it, ideally, you're coming to the regional business managers with the Division of Small Business next week or even sooner if you've started working on this with your initial draft. They'll refer you to us. What we'll do then is we'll sit down with you in a Zoom session and we'll work to re review and improve your grant proposal and financial projections. We're not going to write your edge grant. We're not going to put your financial projections down. You do want to have something resembling a draft coming to us, but we will revise them. We will improve them. And we want to get you in as strong as position as possible to get considered. So keep that in mind as you work on, as you start thinking about what you're going for your, in your grant, you really want to start working on this like in the next few days so that you have enough time to meet with one of the regional business managers, and then meet with us to get your grant in the best possible position for advising. I will warn you that given the work that we do, and we work with several clients that are going for edge grants, um, that the sooner you get this done, the better. Uh, you really don't want to come in on the 25th or 26th or the last week. It's going to be hard for us to meet with you, but more importantly, um, to get a really good application put together. So thank you for your time. I've included my email in the uh, and contact information in the um, slide presentation. So feel free to reach out to me with any direct questions. And for more info on the SBDC, our website's available down there. Thank you, Regina. Thank you, Tom. Uh, and now it's my pleasure to introduce Ka Kathy Collison, who is one of our EDGE winners from round six with Pink Electrical Services. Hi, thank you. Good morning. And thank you for the opportunity to share our story today. 
As new entrepreneurs, my husband and I opened Collison Contracting LLC, and the original intent was really to focus on handyman services. We found lots of family and friends who felt that they needed those services, and we thought we could we could do that. But as we moved down that path, we realized we really wanted to focus um, also on an expansion to include pink electrical services. So we expanded to that area. We are, uh, and that's what we applied for the EDGE grant for. We're a small electrical company in central Delaware offering commercial, residential, and industrial services. And we were so happy to be a round six EDGE winner. We utilized the EDGE funding to purchase a work truck so that we could go from just having my husband um, doing the work to having two crews out running and completing the work across the state. And it has been the best, uh, wonderful experience that I could tell you about. You've heard lots of great information today about reading the guidance carefully, looking at font type, page limits, all of the requirements. Certainly, I would make sure that you focus on all of those things, but I won't expand on it anymore because you've heard a lot of that already. But beyond that, I would certainly recommend communicating early and often with your regional business manager. Mine was Anastasia. I could not say enough good things about her. And I still have relied on her even just maybe two weeks ago, I sent her an email um, asking for some assistance. So it's not just for the EDGE grant, but for beyond as well. Um, also, SCORE Delaware, we were matched up with a wonderful advisor. She helped us through the EDGE grant process, but again, I've, I've communicated with her so many times after the fact and have received so much great support and information from her. This program is so integral, especially for, for new entrepreneurs. Really, I would focus on uh, Size Up Delaware. It helps you to understand the market, size for your business, the customers, your competition, and so many of the things that you'll need for your grant proposal but also to help you make good business decisions in general. Um, the financials, of course, we were a, a new business and so we had a CPA, but um, had still needed some help with our income statement and our balance sheet and our score mentor. She helped, but she also brought in somebody else from the banking industry. So not only are you assigned to someone, but if there's a particular um, focus that you need more help with, that they don't have that specialty, they will find you that, that help as well. The Small Business Development Center, in addition to everything that was mentioned today, they offer a ton of trainings and videos that we have, we've learned a lot from as well. So as you are working your way through the grant application, you'll I believe that you'll find, and I certainly found, that we have used this for so many other things besides the EDGE grant application. We've used the information that we had to pull together for this for other business needs, such as developing a business plan. It really forces you to think through things that you might not otherwise consider, particularly as a young or new entrepreneur, and certainly maybe not early in your company. Maybe it's things that you would think of later or learn later, but it forces you through those thought processes. And I've said a million times, and I truly sincerely mean it, if we hadn't won, I really believe that this process still would have proven beneficial to our company. It forces you to think through things and obtain the help and resources that you need. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Kathy's gonna hang out with us during the question and answer period as well. So if you have any specific questions for her, um, and now just a few slides to close out the formal presentation. Uh, please be sure to follow our division on social media and here are all of our handles. Um, we post a lot of important information, a lot of updates on EDGE and other resources that we can provide for your small business there. Uh, next slide. Uh, and additionally, we'll hope, we hope that you'll sign up for our e-newsletter through our website. Uh, the newsletter is distributed every Wednesday morning that also has edge updates and much more information that I think you'll find helpful. Uh, next slide. I also encourage any small business uh, that's considering applying for edge to please contact our office for assistance uh, through one of the above ways. So visit our website. We have an email inbox that is monitored regularly uh, or you can just call our main number that's listed there. Uh, and then as we've mentioned many times throughout the presentation, our regional business managers are here to help. They are a, a uh, invaluable resource for our small businesses. So their areas and their uh, contact information 
is listed there. You can also find that on our website as well. Um, and then here is the contact information for the Office of Supplier Diversity. Uh, like I said, Siobhan White is our director there. Uh, they have a, a, we have a website for them as well where you can learn more about what it means to become a certified diverse supplier with the state. Uh, and then once again, the deadline for applications is Friday, September 29th at 4 p.m. Please keep that in mind. We are very strict about our deadline. Um, and then that is it for our portion. We, uh, again, will post the recording and the slides at de.gov slash edge by the end of today. Um, and we will now move into the question and answer portion. Uh, Andrea, do you want to start sharing uh, the questions that people have submitted? Absolutely. We have quite a few and uh, really good questions. Uh, I am also going to back the slides up to the contact information for the regional business managers as we got several questions about who is my regional business manager. So whatever county your small business is in, or if you're a startup and don't have a physical location yet, pick the county where you live and reach out to that business manager. All right, I'm gonna- And then go if the rest of, if any of the rest of the team wants to uh, join for the question and answer period, I appreciate any uh, help. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, Thank you. Folks, you are able to join in. Okay, uh, so let me start by asking, uh, one of the questions was, can you explain the difference between an entrepreneur business and a STEM business? Yes. So I will say again, we get this question a lot. If you have specific questions about your individual business, uh, I encourage you to reach out to a regional business manager. They can kind of talk you through it in more detail. Um, but generally, so science, technology, engineering, and math is STEM. But as you're thinking that through, really think, are you, are you, is the function of your business kind of something else that just touches the STEM sectors? Or are you truly like a STEM company? And typically we see, you know, people who are, are inventing something, innovating something, creating something. And it's not, I don't, I don't want you to feel like we're discouraging you from being a STEM company, but it truly comes down to the competitive aspect of it. So if you are trying to compete in the STEM category and you're you're not really like a hundred percent what those other companies are who are competing against you, you're probably gonna be more successful in the entrepreneur category. And that's why we're encouraging you to submit under that category. Yeah, okay. I like to say too, if you're, if you're a STEM company, but your project for the application is to buy a van, like that's not a STEM project. So you would be an entrepreneur. Even if your company, if you think your company's a STEM company. And again, if you have questions, specific questions about your project and your company, you know, reach out. We're, we're here to help and to um, answer those questions for you. Great. A good, idea, a good idea is to go and look at the um, look at the past winners and the past projects. And you can see in the different categories what's entrepreneur, what's STEM. That'll give you a good idea. Yes. Thank you, Dave. That's very helpful. I think I, I second that. To go along with that, so is any business developing an app a STEM business? I would say in most cases, yes. But again, that's if, if you if you doubt if you're doubting yourself, ask one of the regional business managers, and we can help sort of clarify. Um, yeah. Dep yes. yes. Alrighty. Um, can you apply for an EDGE grant as a sole proprietor? Yes. Easy. Um, next question. Is the $500,000 net worth in reference to the business entity or inclusive, inclusive of the owner operator's net worth as well? It is specific to the business entity. So we'll... That's one of the things we're looking for on when we look at your financial statements. Next question. Does the 20 pages include, hold on, I lost the question, uh, include the balance sheet and income statements? 
Yes, it does. And the balance sheet and the income statement are required pieces of your application. So you are not going to make it very far if you do not have them in your submission. And if they are on page 21, they will not count and you will be knocked out in round one. And you don't have to make income to have an income statement. You, you can have negative income. So when you buy your buy business license, that's part of your income statement. Yes. Next question, we got a couple along this line. I have an online retail store, not a physical location. Do I qualify, do I qualify to apply for an EDGE grant? The business is registered with a physical Delaware home address and we have a PO box. Yes. If you are physically located in the state of Delaware and you are operating your business out of the state of Delaware, you are eligible for EDGE. And you have a Delaware business license. Yes. Um, let's see. There's a similar one. Uh, all right, I'll come back to that. Um, does the age of the business refer to the LLC or the physical business? For instance, in this case, the person has a legacy business with new owners? It refers to the LLC. Uh, we do check that with the division of corporations. We check your incorporation date when we're reviewing your application and that is the, the date that we go by. All right. Um, would a report from my QuickBooks or previous tax returns do for the income statement? Yes, I'm also going to defer to Andrew who reviews those. But I I mean, most of the time, I think we see QuickBook reports made into the financial statements. Sorry, Andrew, could you repeat the question? Yeah, no, sure. Uh, would a report from my QuickBooks or previous, or previous tax returns suffice for my income statement? So your QuickBooks report, yes, would be great. Um, your tax returns, you can use them to turn them into your income statement, but we don't typically receive tax returns as part of the EDGE application uh, to in, in lieu of an income statement. Anybody else be good with that? If, okay. if they were looking at, when they were talking about the reporting part, the FIRE reporting, um, then sometimes we do look at the tax the taxes but that's like if they're three years in and they're having issues with the reporting portion of it. So sometimes that is reported, but um, but it just depends on the circumstance of the business. Great, thank you. Okay, if a team employs a grant facilitator for the writing of the grant application, can that be factored into the business match? No. No, the, it should be project specific and the project is what you're applying for the funding for, not the process of applying for the funding. Are there any other grants that would exclude you from being eligible for the EDGE grant? No. Uh, this is a good one because we had a couple on this. Can previous expenses be used for the match, for instance, I prepaid my website designer at the beginning of the year, but have not implemented the changes yet. I can jump in and take that one. Uh, no, so the, the, ex the match portion is also project specific and the project is what you're applying to do for the EDGE program. So your expenses are only eligible after you've received notification that you've, oh, you're a winner. So any expenses incurred prior to receiving that notification aren't eligible for your match. And remember too, it's a, this is a competition. So, you know, we're, we're looking for the best of the best. And so if it's something you, that you've already sort of paid for and don't have results, that's not gonna make your application look really good. Um, I think, let me clarify, um, this person is not asking if they can claim it as expenses, but wanting to know is they can if they can use it for the match, the match component. That's correct. No, you, so it still wouldn't be eligible for the match component either. Thank you. If you are not in business yet 
and it's a brand new startup, how do you handle the business license requirement? Are you required to get the license prior to applying for the grant? Yes, yes. you are required to get the license prior to applying. A, bit, a Delaware business license is a requirement of the application. So that's one of the things that we're checking off as we're going through the review. So yes, you should have a, a active Delaware business license when you apply. And that is state of Delaware, not just county or city. State Where of Delaware, have... yes. Mm -hmm. If you submit a city or a county, that will not count. Um, and also just to note that uh, business licenses come from the Division of Finance. Um, so your the business manager who you are put in contact with can help you connect to the right person if you don't have one yet. Or And you can also go to onestop.delaware.gov. You can get one there. Thank you, Joe. We encourage people to check out One Stop as it has a lot about the process and a lot of resources on there. Um, this one, I am probably going to ask the person to explain a little more. Are there bonuses in STEM category as well or just entrepreneur category? I, that's, that's okay, Andrea, I don't need additional information. So the, okay. uh, the M, MVB like status and the uh, geographic, both of those bonuses are across both categories. Thank you. Are there any changes to the application or the process in this round versus previous rounds that we should be aware of? No. There are, and there are some tracking, uh, so internal tracking for our communications department that, that will be an addition. Um, and there's also going to be some one pagers on eligible expenses to help people and uh, to help applicants navigate that to figure out is their expense eligible or if it's not. Uh, and again, can virtual businesses apply specifically ones developing a new app? And I'm assuming that is, again, only if you have a Delaware business license and are physically living in Delaware. Yes, correct. Uh, great question. This is the one I was looking for earlier. After winning, will I be able to operate my service-based business in another state while still doing business in Delaware. Your business, if you are a winner, if you are an applicant, your business should be majority located in Delaware. So that means the majority of your facilities and the majority of your employees are based in Delaware. If you are expanding, but the majority of your business is still located in Delaware, then you are still eligible. If at any point that tip, that scale tips and you are majority one of those uh, components is majority located outside of the state of Delaware, you are no longer eligible. You are no longer compliant. So what if they are majority physically located in Delaware with their employees in Delaware, but maybe it has tipped so that the services that they provide are out of state, like HVAC, contracting, uh, that kind of stuff. No, if like the revenue is primarily coming out of, from out of state, then that's not, that's not a, that's not something we're concerned about. Bring that revenue here. We, we love to see it. Must I wait to spend matching funds until after winners are announced, or can I start spending and documenting those expenditures between now and that point? Once you're notified, you are able to start uh, spending your money. Just keep your receipts because you will need them uh, for, for reporting. So you're fine. And so I think the key point point is after you are notified. So if you're correct, so you do not have to wait for, right. You do not have to wait. You do not have to wait for the award ceremony. Once we, the division share with you that you are a successful applicant, you have won, you can start spending your money. 
but not between the point of submitting the application and being notified. No, you have to be you have to be told you're a winner. No. Is the practice of medicine considered STEM for the grant, um, specifically a low cost veterinary clinic? So you're gonna to wanna to talk to your original business manager, but my gut is telling me no, I just with those two lines. <laughs> but you wanna to talk to your regional business manager to get more specific. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I have the same reaction as Joe. Like my thought is if it's something for a veterinary clinic, uh, that's entrepreneur. If it's something that you're developing for use, like across multiple, like across the veterinary practice of medicine, then that is STEM. Um, I will go back in slides. Can you explain the three to one match again? Sure. So um, three to one match means that for every dollar you spend, you're eligible for $3 of edge funding. So if you want to apply for $50,000 in edge funds, let's say you're an entrepreneur, that means that in order to achieve that match, you would need to spend one third of that yourself, either through your own cash or a loan or, or, or any other means. So that would be $16,667 that you would need to spend in order to qualify for a full $50,000 match. Great. Um, as far as compliancy with DOL DENREC, is this applicable for all businesses? Uh, I'm a sole member LLC. I don't have employees. Um, so can you repeat that? Sure. As far as compliancy with DOL and DENREC, is this applicable for all businesses? For example, I'm a sole uh, member, meaning sole proprietor, LLC, I don't have employees. Yeah, so what we're checking with DOL primarily is, you know, if you do have, if you are required to carry like unemployment insurance and workers comp, are you doing, do you have those? Have you like checked off all of your boxes with them? So what we typically just reach out to the other agencies with the information and say, hey, we're looking for, you know, the compliance information for this company. So if you're not required, if you don't have employees and you're not required to like carry workers comp or uh, contribute to unemployment insurance, but whatever, whatever you're supposed to be doing as a business, that's what we're checking to make sure that you are doing. Yeah. Well, that I, oh, um, go ahead. I, just, I just wanted to, to answer the DENREC thing. So DENREC is Department of Natural Resources and Environmental Control. Sorry, we speak in a, we speak in acronyms in, in the government. So I apologize that you didn't know what that was. That's that's our fault. One thing that I like to mention is um, when I meet with business owners that are interested in applying for the EDGE grant, I encourage you if you haven't ever had a conversation with the Department of Finance or you know Department of Labor or DENREC, which um, Laura just <laughs> mentioned what the acronyms stand for and revenue, you know, reaching out to them and just finding out if you're compliant and what you need to become compliant prior to applying. So that way, if there is any hiccups, you address that head on. So that, were, that way there's no delay in receiving your funding if you're awarded for the EDGE grant. Yeah, and if you're a sole member LLC, you probably don't give yourself a W-2, so you probably don't have any DOL requirements. Um, but yeah, again, feel free to ask your regional business managers. All right. When are the next grant rounds taking place after fall 2023, please. So we do this twice a year. We do it in the spring and the fall of every year. So this will open again. Uh, usually, I think it'll open, it will open February, March of next year, but we will notify everybody. If we purchased an existing business and invested therein and would use funding for additional equipment, would the initial investment in the business be able to be counted as part of the match? No. Are, are, are you going to, they already purchased the business now or they're going to purchase the business? Um, that is not clear. Um, I if would they had already purchased the business, then the, then the expense would have occurred prior to their getting the notification of reward. So they wouldn't be eligible as a match. Um, 
But if they were going to purchase the business in the future and use that, then that would be different. Okay, thank you. Okay, do you have to have the money for the thing you are looking to purchase going into the application since you have a year to spend the money? No, you need to expend it within one year of receiving the grant. So once you receive the grant, you have one year to expend the grant funds and your match. Um, but I will say that if you send an application and you don't demonstrate where this portion of the match is going to come from, and it's not obvious from your balance sheet or your income statement, then that is going to be something that we would kind of question, like, hmm, where is this person planning on, on getting this match from? All right, we have a couple of people who commented that they were unable to sign up for our newsletter and it gave an error statement. Um, Susie, would you please put the business email address into the chat and anyone who had an issue with that, please email us at that email address and we will see if there's something going on on the back end we're not aware of. If we are looking at purchasing an office for our business, would that fall more into the entrepreneurial grant rather than the STEM? Yes. Well, that's easy. Yeah, yeah, that would be entrepreneurial. But also, like what we have, we're, remember this is a competition, and what we're really looking for is somehow how your small business is at a disadvantage to a national business, and how this project, what we're giving our $50,000 to, will help you to compete at an equal playing field as a national business. Um, so if it's gonna be something like purchasing an office, you'll have to explain how that will, I don't know, put you on equal footing with your national competitors. Got it. Do we have to have the match funds up front? I think we kind of answered that. But go ahead and repeat it. Do we have to have the match no, funds no. up there? No, they no. need to be expended within one year. Yeah. And you have to have, you should have a, a plan for how you're going to provide those matching funds. Should should the pages for the application be single side or double sided? The, it will be in a <clears throat> PDF. So it'll just come electronically. Um, but it should be double spaced. Um, so it says, how do you recommend altering your application for future submissions? Will you give feedback? The answer is yes. If you have worked with a regional business manager or even if you haven't and you were not successful, um, contact the regional business manager uh, based on your county and they will give you application on your feedback or on your application. They will give you feedback on your application. Great question. The application and proposal are separate entities, but together they must equal 20 pages? No, application is separate, proposal is 20 pages. Proposal includes like financial statements, business license, everything like that. Will the proposal template be released? And how closely do you expect us to follow the template? Yes, um, the proposal template will be released. I think it's going up today, right, Andrea? Is that correct? That's correct. We will have it up there by the end of the day. Yeah, it'll be on our website today. And I recommend that you follow that template exactly, honestly, if you want to be a, a successful application. I think we have kind of, uh, the, the template is based off of the rubric. So I think it's a, it's a really helpful tool to use as you're trying to like think out each of the components of your proposal and how they tie back to the rubric. So I think that it'll be, it'll make it easier on the businesses as they're trying to format the proposal. And note that while the template for the proposal will be released today, the application itself will not be released until Friday. 
So you will need to check back on Friday. Uh, that will be the earliest date that the application itself will be available. And still reach out to your regional business manager. You'll hear that over and over again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you apply for multiple businesses with this grant? Yes. Yes. As long as your each business is eligible based on the criteria that we've laid out. I will say it is compet again, it's competitive. So if you're you'll at some point you'll be competing against yourself. Uh, but you're not precluded. Would a 501c3 need to show business license? That's a good question. I'm actually not 100% <laughs> sure on that one. I We will have to uh, get back on that one because, like I said, 501c3s are not pro-included. We have not had many applications from them in the past, um, but a, like a business license is a requirement, but I have, I'm have i not sure if 501c3s are allowed to get a business license. We will get, we will respond to that person after we look into it. Got it. I made a note. Um, and the slides about the rubrics for STEM and entrepreneurship entrepreneur categories. There was a slide that said the entrepreneur category also gives bonuses for opportunity zones and something else, which was downtown development district, correct? Um, uh, so it is, an, if you are, there's one for if you are located in either an opportunity zone or a downtown development district. And then there's one if you are a minority women or veteran to own business enterprise. And that's for both, correct? Both STEM and entrepreneur. Both categories, correct. Would I qualify if I use a foreign entity filing <clears throat> if I'm moving my business to Delaware from Maryland? So you need to have a Delaware business license to apply um, and you need to be majority located in the state of Delaware before you are eligible to receive any funding. So if you are a Maryland company and part of your project includes moving your company to Delaware, that is not eligible for edge funding, you would have to move to Delaware, be majority located in Delaware in order to receive the funding. And you have to have a Delaware business license to apply. Are there any e-commerce businesses that have previously won the grant? I see mostly businesses with physical locations. Uh, I don't recall off the top of my head. Um, but again, as long as you are here in Delaware, you do not need to have like a physical bit. Well, your business has to have a physical location, but you don't need to be like a storefront. How do you know if you made it to the finals for the Edge Grant? Do you send out emails letting us know if they did not qualify? Uh, so you will be notified by your regional business manager if you are a finalist. They will. Um, you know, share the information about the finals and and kind of walk you through what the what the presentations will look like. Um, and I'm not when does anybody remember when the timing for the email notification? People who are not selected as winners. So if you're a finalist, you're notified via your regional business manager. Once the finals are done, the winners and the people, the finalists who are not selected are also notified by their regional business manager. Everyone else who didn't make it to the finals are notified via email. Um, Andrew, do you know what the timing of that email usually is? Uh, it is around the same time that we notify the people the who finalists. are finalists. Yes. Okay. Okay, during the presentation, I believe it was stated registering as a state of Delaware vendor is a compliance requirement upon selection. Are there specific requirements needed to be eligible to register as a state of Delaware vendor? So that's, if I got this right, that's just so if you're the winner, we can pay you. It's just a term that the state uses so that yes, we can yeah. 
money to you. It's just there's you have to go into the state like vendor system and just register as there's no like additional requirements. We again we are going to make sure that you are in compliance with all the other state agencies before we distribute the funding. But registering as a vendor is a like a I think it's a relatively simple process. Um so just wanted to let everybody know it's something it's just a step that needs to happen in order for us to disperse the funds. Correct. Yeah, it literally takes like five minutes or less. Yeah. What if for some reason you were unable to match the three to one match? So the three to one match is a requirement. If you are not able to, I guess, complete like you are only eligible for the funding insofar as you can match it three to one. So if you can't do the full three to one match, you should probably pare down the amount of money that you're requesting uh, so that you can match it. Yeah, and remember the grant for the entrepreneur round is up to 50,000. You don't have to show that you're gonna spend 50,000. If it's less than that, if the piece of equipment that you need is 24,000, that's all you need to request the grant for. And it makes it easier, an easier business case as well. Yes, and we've had winners in the past who did not uh, apply for the full amount of the funding. So it's not something that you'll be dinged for. What are the expenses using grant funding limited to after being awarded the grant? So we have a, uh, I'm glad this question came up. We have a uh, budget document that is gonna be posted to our division website uh, on the edge page. And that'll outline exactly what is permitted as an expense and what's what's not permitted. So, but just again, a brief overview, it needs to be specific to the project in your application. So uh, that, that's one thing. The next thing, I think one of the most common things we receive is it, it cannot be used to reimburse any owner um, for the work that they're contributing to a project. For example, an owner of the business can't take a salary out of the edge grant. Um, and, and other than that, I, again, I recommend that you look at the budget guidelines document that's posted to our website that outlines exactly what, what is eligible and what's not eligible as an expense. And also you want to state that in your project, how you're going to spend the funds so that we know how you're going to spend the money to get on equal footing with a larger competitor. All right, can you clarify about the three to one match? Is it $3 to our $1 or $1 to our $3? No, so it's three three state dollars for every one business dollar. So like Andrew said, if, you, if it's STEM, the state is giving $100,000 and then the company is giving at least $34,000. So the total project should be at least $134,000. And then for the entrepreneur side, if the if you're applying for fifty thousand, our fifty thousand is coming in. You're providing the like sixteen to seventeen thousand, so the total project should be at least like sixty seven thousand dollars. Does your business have to be full time to qualify? Uh, and I think, all right, we're going to circle back on that one. Are there specific processes for tracking the use of grant funds like a grant portal? We don't have a portal um, for like inputting your expenses, um, but you will be, in terms of process, you will be required to, to provide receipts or invoices and proof of payment. So make sure that you have both of those things and you're collecting them and storing them for, for your project after you receive an edge grant. Okay, next question is, how strict is the scope of the project? Does it need to be highly narrow? To what degree can some breadth be tolerated in the scope? Again, I think it goes back to the com like the competitive nature of it. So I think a very well defined specific project always fares better than kind of a more nebulous like this is kind of you know when you start to see like project creep, that's when I think the application starts to weaken. So the more that you can really like focus and be specific on your project, I think the stronger the whole proposal becomes. Um, 
Again, where is the new guidance on expenses located? It will be posted to de.gov slash edge later today. Does the match money need to be in the account or can you commit to spending the money from your personal account? I know Tom mentioned earlier that, um, that they mentioned starting a business bank account, especially if you're applying for this grant or any type of grant, it makes it a lot easier when you're trying to track how the money is spent. So definitely having a business banking account, bank account would be beneficial to your business. Yeah, I mean, you want a business bank account, but you don't need a separate account for this project, for the EDGE grant. It can just be a regular business account or however you're doing your filing. We don't care where the match comes from, right, Regina? Like, it's your own money? Yeah, again, it, you don't have to, you know, you have the year to come up with the match and you just need to be able to prove that fun, non-EDGE funds were spent on the project. Um, the legend of the Opportunity Zone interactive map is a little unclear. Are the yellow colored areas the designated Opportunity Zones? Let me go to that slide. There. So if you are on the Opportunity Zone portion of our website, if you scroll almost all the way to the bottom, there is a section called Opportunity Zones map, which is different than this, uh, you know, map that's shown here. That is an interactive one. So it'll take you to a separate web page and then you can type in um, your, uh, like the address. And I believe on that map, the opportunity zones are designated in yellow. The boundary is drawn and then everything within the yellow is the opportunity zone. But the map you have on the screen right now, the yellow is the downtown development district boundaries and the blue is the opportunity zone. On the map that's, on the screen right now. I got you. Yes. So I think it's more helpful for the businesses to actually go to the interactive map at the bottom of the opportunity zone webpage. And then you can you can tell if your actual like address is located in either of those boundaries. Because they they do, you know, they do stop at they're at the parcel level. So they do stop um kind of like in between addresses. And Susie, our communications manager, just wanted folks to know she's unable to type in the chat, but our business email is business at Delaware.gov. And I will go to that slide now. Yeah. Um, and that is for the newsletter issues. A follow-up question with regard to employing a grant facilitator. If the pay structure of the facilitator is based on the money earned, can that be factored into the business match? I would still say no. <laughs> I would say, yeah, you should reach out to your business manager to get into some of the specifics there. Some of the specific information is harder to answer without knowing more, but... That I don't think that's typically something that we've allowed. So, but reach out to your business manager. And and th and this competition is a little different than normal grant competitions. So, grant writers aren't really the best people to write to write this. This is a competition. It's it although we call it a grant, it's a competition, and they you have to know your business and understand how this project is going to make you a stronger business. At the end of the day, yeah, we're giving out money, but we're giving out money no hoping that in the back end, we're going to get it all back in income tax and 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 stuff like that because your company's going to grow and be huge in our state. Great. And a follow-up to the 501c3 business license questions. Um, Somebody said they looked into it. If the 501c3 is making revenue in a manner that Dor Delaware normally requires a business license for, we need to have a business license. Um, we will just um, circle back and confirm that though. But thank you. Great, thank you. If you have previously won the EDGE grant, can you reapply? Oh no, no, you can't. 
if you previously won unless it's another business. business yeah yes yeah, just if it's a new business new business you may or a different business right business for a different project is that what you mean no no a different new business okay so if you have previously won unless it's a new business you may not reapply yes do you have to match the bonuses the opportunity zone for instance as well three to one Yes, let me clarify here that the bonuses are not related to the grant dollars awarded. They are related to the scoring of the proposals. So you will get extra points in your like overall score if you are in one of those areas or if you are a majority women veteran or minority owned business. Thank you. Is there a tax liability on the funds if we do win? Uh, our go-to line is that you should check with your financial advisor. We do not provide uh, legal or accounting advice. I will say, I think generally our grants are not treated as tax exempt, but again, check with your uh, financial advisor. And can you provide the link to the new financial guidelines, please? Once they are posted, they will be on DE dot gov slash edge. Are winners able to manage changes in estimates if the total project is on target but certain items are over or under? Yes. So I would, I would, yes, you are. You should be communicating with us as you're seeing those things because the grant agreement delineates like what amount you are spending on what item. So if you're, if anything needs to change, that's okay. And we can change it, but you should be communicating with us in advance of that happening so that we can, uh, we can amend the grant agreement and make sure that everybody, you know, is aware of the changes and that we are, we are comfortable with whatever has changed. Yeah. And I'd also like to point out that, you know, if it's a, a small change, you know, to within your budget items, let's say you have five different items and then, you know, one is gonna get receive a little bit more funding than the other, um, you know, than you, when you originally applied. Like Regina said, communicate that with, with us and make sure that, that we're on on, on same page. Um, I will say though, if it's a substantial change to what you applied for, then the answer is generally gonna be like, no. So if you said my budget was, that I was going to buy this new piece of equipment and my application was centered around that piece of equipment and everything I talked about was at, around that piece of equipment. And then instead, I don't want to buy that. I want to pay my rent for the next you know, year or so. That would be something that we probably wouldn't approve. So like, as Regina said, make sure that you're in communication with, uh, with the business, your business finance manager and with the digital and small business before making any, any large purchases that are outside of the budget scope. Okay. Do we have to show the match in bank statement, physical cash, or tax refund? You'll need to show it in, re in, in receipt or proof of payment. So it's an, it's expend it's an expenditure that you're contributing to the project. And Susie just wanted to let you know, uh, our email vendor has informed us that the error message customers are getting is an error on their end and they are working through it as quickly as possible. And so she has asked, please apply your email address in the chat and she will manually add it to the list. The other option is go back later and sign up. Um, I see we do have a couple in there. So we'll make sure to save those. All right, we are winding down to the last five minutes of our time. Is the grant a full payout or a drawdown as expenses are incurred? It is a full payout. So you get the full amount of the approved grant. So, you know, up to $50,000, whatever you've requested and has been awarded, you get that up front. Then you have one year to spend that with your match, and then you will need to submit your expense report to us. Uh, and also Susie has put the budget matching guidelines up for us already. Thank you. 
uh, and you'll she put the link directly in the Q&A. And again, you can find that on de.gov slash edge. So follow-up of budget change. So you're saying we have to be spot on dollar by dollar on the cost projection of the project. No, you don't need to be spot on dollar for dollar. Um, but if you have started expending, you know, you're, you're spending your budget and you realize that you're not going to be within the scope of the categories you define, uh, in that case, you would need to communicate with your regional business manager with us to make a budget adjustment prior to expending the rest of the of, of the money. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't need to be to the penny. Um, but if it's substantially out of the realm of what you applied for, then we should talk about amending the budget prior to expending the, the dollars. And you apply the, for the grant as two people in partnership to start a business. Yes. I see it a lot of nonprofits on there. And just remember, if you're a nonprofit, you're gonna have to be competing with for profits. So it's not just like where a lot of nonprofits can apply for grants for funding to help a group, a type of group. It's not something like that. You're gonna have to be selling something and competing um, and to better compete with somebody on a national scale. Thank you. Uh, what if we don't use the entire amount we applied for? We will be uh, asking for that portion back. How much money do you get if you apply for the 50,000, the money you have to put up? Can you have used some of that now for startup equipment, products, et cetera? I think this is the question but we similar to the question we addressed earlier. Um, so you in order for your match to be eligible, it has to be expended after the notification of, of receiving the award. So you know if you're applying for a fifty thousand dollar edge grant, as Regina mentioned earlier, you need to anticipate spending about sixty seven thousand uh, dollars in total, including the grant funds that you're receiving. Um, we're hard, having a hard time finding what our competition is doing financially to put into the edge grant. If we've not opened yet, can we use, oh, sorry, lots of people are adding questions. I've just lost that. If we've not opened yet, can we use our statement from our bank for the income sheet? So again, if you're looking to kind of see what your competition is doing that's information that i think you'll be able to find at size up delaware so you can either head over there you can sign up for the webinar to figure out how to use that to kind of narrow down you know what your i guess what they're doing like in revenue i know that information is usually available and then in terms of the income statement like your income statement should be drawn from you know what's in your business bank account but it should you uh, you should not be submitting bank statements. You should be using your bank statements and your financial information to create those financial documents to submit. And again, I think the SBDC is helpful there. Uh, and that kind of dovetails into the next question. How do you figure out five years with the grant and five years without it if you haven't opened your business yet? Is there a worksheet? So. You know, again, reach out to a regional business manager. They'll connect you to the SBDC for help, but these will be projections if you have it right. open. And those are things that, I mean, I think similar to what Kathy was saying, like these are questions that we, we think you should be thinking through as a business. Like what does your five-year projection look like, I think is a, uh, a helpful thing to think about. And then, you know, that kind of is easy to say, like, this is what we think it's going to look like. What does it look like if we get this grant funding or what if it, we're able to do this project? What, how does that change our financial outlook? Can international patent filing costs be included in the project? Uh, I believe filing a patent. Yeah. As part of your project. Yeah. We've allowed a uh, patent costs in the past. 
Uh, is there a copy of the rubric available? That's in the application, right? It is uh, in the application. I, is it on our website? If it isn't, it will be by, you know, by close of business. It, it'll open on Friday, so it'll be there then. Uh, who's on the judging panel? Uh, that varies uh, round to round. It, we have kind of a, um, a bunch of different people that we usually go to to ask. We are always also looking for additional judges. So I think it usually comes down to, um, you know, ske scheduling and availability of, of some of the people on our list. So Also, the early rounds are done by our business finance team. Um, so there's multiple rounds with multiple different judges. Yes. All right. So, but the early rounds, they are our business finance team. So they're, they, if, you, if yours is a really technical thing, I always say, you know, we're looking at the business side of, of things and not necessarily what your, what the really, don't, don't get too much into the technology as much as we're looking at the business side of things. All right, and with that, that is the final question. Uh, really great conversations uh, today and questions, and we appreciate everyone taking the time. Again, I am leaving you here with all of the emails of our regional business managers up on the screen, so you can reach out to the one that represents the county where your business or you are in. So uh, we hope that this has been helpful. And Director Mitchell, any closing con uh, comments? Thank you everybody for, for joining us. Thanks for your, your participation. Uh, I think this was the most that we've ever had on an EDGE webinar. So really great to see the interest and enthusiasm. Uh, and we look forward to uh, reviewing your proposals. Great, thank you everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.